of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Armenia for 2023-2024. On behalf of Romania, His Excellency Mr. Bogdan Aurescu. On behalf of the Republic of Armenia, His Excellency Mr. Ararat Mirzoyan. And now I kindly invite the two ministers to take a photo with the document. I invite now the two ministers to take a photo with the document. Your Excellency Minister Aurescu, you have the floor. We, we had a very substantial round of discussions when we talked about the development of our bilateral relations, but also about current topics on the international agenda with a focus on the security situation in the Black Sea region and also in the South Caucasus region. We also reviewed the status of the political dialogue below, between us, which is a very good one. We agreed to continue to develop this dialogue. We also talked about the developing of the economic collaboration potential between our countries and about identifying new fields of sectoral cooperation, either if we talk about internal affairs, education, connectivity, consular affairs, or energy. We reconfirmed the clear position of Romania when it comes to condemning the aggression of the Russian Federation against Ukraine, and we have presented the consequences and impact on the regional security on Romania, the impact of this conflict. As long as the Russian Federation will continue to use force and force diplomacy internally and externally, it's important for the international community to stay united. We also reiterated our multidimensional firm support uh, granted to Ukraine and continues to grant to Ukraine. We also reviewed the situation in Moldova and the impact the war in Ukraine has on the neighboring country. And of course, I presented the support Romania grants to Moldova. But we've also, I've also talked to my colleague about the relationship between the EU and Armenia, which is in a full development and deepening process. And we reconfirmed Romania's openness to support this process according also to the comprehensive and enhanced partnership agreement between the EU and Armenia. We also agreed and we'll continue to discuss this because we'll have another meeting today about the opportunities of the Eastern Partnership in developing the relationship between the EU and Armenia. I assured my colleague of Romania support, full support for, to develop this relationship. Of course, the EU played and can play an important role in the South Caucasus, also when it comes to identifying solutions to the challenges we have to solve in our common neighborhood. 
This is why I focused on the contribution that the EU mission for monitoring in Armenia has. It is an idea launched after the tour in the South Caucasus in June 2021, together with my colleagues from Austria and Lithuania, and with the mandate and coordination of the High Representative for foreign policy, Joseph Borrell. After this meeting, I, we presented, after this tour, we presented the conclusion of our common meeting and the proposal back then in 2021 was creating this UMA. I'm happy to see they're already deployed and Romania is participating with experts in this mission and will continue to contribute to this mission. Today, I also express the support for the mediation efforts of the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, and which had a beneficial role in solving certain issues in the relationship between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And I reconfirm today Romania's support for the normalization of these relations, because it's very important, as we have spoke earlier, that stability and peace are ensured in the region. This is why there is a common responsibility of the international community of all the relevant stakeholders to ensure this peace and stability, which is a factor that will bring prosperity in the region. I want to thank once again my colleague for the very good consultations we had and that we will continue today. And once again, Welcome to Bucharest, and you have the floor. First of all, I would like to thank my dear colleague, Mr. Bogdan Aurescu, for the warm, welcome, and fruitful discussions. Today, we had an opportunity to discuss a wide range of topics of bilateral cooperation between Armenia and Romania. Uh, we signed the joint action plan between the ministers, ministries of foreign affairs of the two countries for 2023-2024, building on the path our countries have passed um, since their uh, independence. We expressed our strong willingness to further enhance the bilateral agenda, further expansion of the legal framework, regular political consultations, as well as enhanced cooperation in cultural, educational, scientific uh, 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 spheres uh, will surely serve the goal. We have expressed our readiness to undertake uh, steps also uh, towards the realization of the full potential in economic relations and business ties. It is not worthy that uh, bilateral re relations between our two countries are shaped also by uh, centuries-old ties between Armenian and Romanian peoples. In this context, I would like to emphasize the important role and contribution of the Armenians in Romania and express our gratitude to the Romanian authorities for their caring attitude uh, towards the Armenian community and its culture and religious heritage. One of the most vivid examples of it was the adoption of the law declaring o October 12th uh, as the day of the Armenian language, alphabet, and culture. Dear uh, attendees, proceeding to the Armenia-EU partnership, several important topics of our expanding cooperation were on the agenda of our meeting, including the Armenia-EU political and security dialogue and the effective implementation of the Armenia-EU comprehensive and enhanced uh, partnership agreement. We also exchanged views on our collaboration with the framework of the Eastern Partnership, uh, as well as the European political community. I would like to emphasize that the sending of uh, EU monitors to the Armenian side of the international border between Armenia and Azerbaijan in the immediate aftermath of the Azerbaijan aggression against Armenia in September 2022 and later, the, the deployment of the longer-term EU civilian monitoring mission is an EU important engagement in our region. We see it um, as a valuable tool to enhance human security on the ground, to contribute to peace and stability in the region. 
I would like to specify that we appreciate Romania's valuable contribution to the EU respective uh, discussions. Dear colleagues, uh, continuing the topic of regional security and stability, I should mention that uh, we touched upon the recent developments in the South Caucasus. I briefed my colleague on the existential challenges and threats that both the Republic of Armenia and the people of Nagorno-Karabakh are facing. Regrettably, the blockade of the Lachin Corridor since December 2022, intimidation as well as other actions of Azerbaijan aimed at forcing the Armenian population of Nagorno-Karabakh to leave their homes. The systematic policy of ethnic cleansing are the response of Azerbaijan to the calls of the international community to address the issue of the rights and security of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh. Along with uh, many targeted calls and demands of international bodies, I would like to stress the legally binding order of the International Court of uh, Justice issued on 22nd February against Azerbaijan. The court has found that there is an imminent risk of irreparable harm to Armenians' rights under the Convention for Elimination of Racial Discrimination and ordered Azerbaijan to take all necessary measures to ensure unimpeded movement of persons, vehicles and cargo along the Lachin Corridor in both directions. It should be mentioned that the illegal blockade of Lachin Corridor is not the only blatant violation of the November 9th uh, trilateral statement. There is uh, almost no single provision of the statement that isn't violated by Azerbaijan. Along with the continuously holding of the Armenian prisoners of war as hostages, as well as demands of an extraterritorial corridor through the sovereign territory of the Republic of Armenia, Azerbaijan fails to ensure that internally displaced persons and refugees shall return to the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh and adjacent regions under the control of the agency of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Furthermore, Azerbaijan continues its hate speech and warmongering rhetoric on the highest level, as well as systematic aggressive actions on the ground and the occupation of around 150 square kilometers of the southern territory of Republic of Armenia. We believe that our partners, the international community, have an important role to play by using the respective tools and mechanisms, including sending an international fact-finding mission to the Lachin Corridor and Nagorno-Karabakh. Dear colleagues, Armenia has repeatedly announced its readiness for constructive dialogue with Azerbaijan in an environment free from uh, hate speech, preconditions, and warmongering the rhetoric for the sake of sustainable peace and security in the South Caucasus. Armenia has strong political will to reach peace and stability in the region, and despite all difficulties, we continue the talks with Azerbaijan in good faith. Dear Minister, thank you uh, once again for today's sincere conversation. I am genuinely interested in continuing our dialogue to give a new impetus to widening the agenda of the relations between our two countries. Last but not least, dear Bogdan, I extend my invitation to you to visit Yerevan at your earliest convenience. Thank you. Your Excellency, thank you very much. Now we have time for two questions, if there are any from the media. Uh, uh, good afternoon. I will read the questions from, from the Armenian side. Uh, the first question goes uh, to the Minister of Romania, and if the Foreign Minister of Armenia has a comment, uh, this question can be covered by the both ministers. As it has been repeatedly mentioned, on February 22, 2013, the International Court of Justice issued a legally binding order against Azerbaijan to take all necessary measures and open the Lachin Corridor. The non-implementation by Azerbaijan of this ruling of the highest legal authority of the UN goes against any norms of international law, as well as the integrity of the international legal system. What is the assessment of Romania as a country that has recognized the jurisdiction of the court as compulsory, and what measures Romania can take towards the implementation of the ruling? 
Uh, there is a second uh, a short question on a topic related to the uh, energy cooperation with the South Caucasus. And uh, some, uh, we have received uh, several questions on the same topic from, from different media who are asking about the energy cooperation of the European Union with Azerbaijan. Uh, because this country continues the aggressive policy towards its neighbor, of, uh, neighbor Armenia. Does uh, sole energy factor shadow the respect for international law and protection of human rights? Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the questions. Um, I think it's, uh, uh, Romania is one, uh, it's very clear that Romania is one of uh, the um, uh, states which are very much supporting the um, International Court of Justice and international justice. As you know, uh, the respect for international law is embodied in the um, concept, in the very core concept of, uh, of our Romanian uh, foreign uh, policy. And um, the um, advantages of um, uh, using the um, international justice are evident for us. It is not just a theoretical uh, issue, it is just a, um, a, it is just a practical um, um, well, con conclusion because Romania has um, uh, already used the International Court of Justice in order to solve um, uh, an important um, uh, um, issue with uh, one of our neighbors and um, uh, this was very uh, helpful. Uh, I think it is extremely important that um, support for the International Court of Justice is uh, expressed and, uh, uh, of course, uh, it is a very valuable instrument in order to solve uh, any kind of uh, disputes. At the same time, Romania is supporting the um, uh, acceptance of the compulsory jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice. Two years ago, I have launched uh, an initiative at uh, the UN uh, level in order to um, promote the acceptance by, uh, sta by, by states, by UN member states, of the acceptance of the compulsory jurisdiction, either by um, issuing a unilateral declaration, as we have done uh, back in 2015, or by uh, including the, um, uh, a reference to the, um, uh, to the jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice in um, uh, compromissory clauses or in special agreements concluded between uh, states. At the same time, uh, Romania has um, uh, intervened in the case um, between uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia before the International Court of Justice, and uh, I will have the honor to represent uh, Romania before the uh, ICJ in that uh, case as an agent. So um, for us, uh, for Romania, the International Court of uh, Justice is of uh, uh, great uh, importance, and we uh, support the use of the International Court of Justice in order for uh, all disputes to be uh, solved. As far as the energy cooperation is uh, concerned, we have discussed about energy cooperation. This is a very important uh, uh, topic. Um, as you know, um, the um, use of um, renewable sources of uh, energy um, is um, uh, extremely uh, topical now, especially when we want to get rid of um, certain dependencies from uh, uh, energy sources coming from uh, uh, states which are not like-minded with us. So that is why I think uh, uh, developing together, uh, exploring the possibilities of, uh, of using um, uh, renewable energy uh, and exp exporting it uh, to um, uh, Europe or to any, any other uh, destinations where it is needed, I think this is something that we have to um, continue to uh, discuss together and to find opportunities, especially that there are uh, European Union uh, funds available to support such uh, projects. As you know, we have already uh, started uh, a joint project of um, transportation of um, uh, electric uh, power from uh, renewable uh, sources from uh, Azerbaijan, uh, together with Georgia, together with Hungary. We have signed uh, the uh, agreement uh, in uh, December in Bucharest, and then we are now exploring the ways how to implement this uh, together with um, the uh, European uh, Commission. If there are any other questions? I have a question, if I may, for both ministers. How Romania has helped in the Nogorno-Karabakh situation? And Minister Aurescu, I would like you to answer to the next issue. How did Romania help Ukraine in terms of uh, weapons? Because you have a BBC interview where you didn't answer clearly to this. And if I may add something for the Romanian succession to the Schengen area, because we know there are still discussions 
one of the chances of Romania to join Schengen this year. As for the Nagorno-Karabakh situation, Romania, as I've already said in my speech, has participated in the decision-making process at EU level in terms of creating this monitoring mission at the border between Azerbaijan and Armenia in Armenia. In 2021, in June, we had a tour in the South Caucasus. We visited the three countries in this region. And after this tour, after this visit, we proposed a set of recommendations that result in from the discussion we had back then. And one of the proposals referred to creating a monitoring mission of the EU at the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan, following the example of the monitoring mission in Georgia. And I'm very happy that this proposal has been implemented. So the foundation for this EU monitoring mission in Armenia is a proposal coming from Romania, and I'm very happy with that. I also want to mention here that I already talked to my colleague, and namely that the last meeting of the Foreign Affairs Council, I, we discussed and I proposed to my colleague to introduce on the agenda of a future meeting of the Foreign Minister Council this spring to enter also the topic of long-term conflicts like Black Sea or South Caucasus. And it's a proposal that um, continues the proposal from 2020 and 20. 2021, and based on that proposal, this topic was uh, discussed uh, in the Lisbon meeting. It is the moment to resume this topic on the active uh, agenda of the Council because we think there is interest and it's uh, the opportunity to have a um, bigger engagement and a bigger role in the region. As for the second question, as I've said repeatedly, Romania's policy is not to mention the military support given the need for the EU and NATO support granted to Ukraine to be as efficient as possible. As for Romania joining Schengen, at the beginning of the year we continued in an active way our political and diplomatic actions. I've discussed with all my country with all my counterparts from the member states, EU member states that are also Schengen member states. From Austria, we, own, we got a reconfirmation for the support, but also the active involvement uh, with Vienna to do this. I've discussed with my counterpart, Mr. Schallenberg, many times in this period we had uh, conversation over the phone and also in the Davos meeting or the security conference in Munchen and even in the Foreign Affairs Council two weeks ago we discussed this and starting with January as you already win you as you already know, we agreed to have technical discussions between the Ministry of Internal Affairs between because the Austrian party proposed that and the ministry the dialogue between the internal for affairs ministry is ongoing. We negotiate a bilateral action plan that would apply the recommendation and the decision of the European Council from February about fighting illegal migration. Also, here, um, our ministries have agreed and launched a pilot project of best practices on the border between Romania and Serbia also to apply the decisions of the European Council. Actually, Romania has substantially contributed to the drawing of the conclusions of the European Council as we've contributed to the drafting and approval and implementation of the action plan for the Western Balkans. So, 
We have diplomatic actions at all levels, but for the moment we are focusing on implementing these measures, even though Romania does not agree and does not recognize the connection Austria makes between illegal migration and the Schengen accession. Given that Romania is not on the route of Western Balkan or a source of illegal migration, but we take into account the sensitivity of this topic for Austria and we act in this direction together with the European Commission and the other member states. So our actions will continue, but we have to take into account the fact that the reason for which Austria has blocked Romania's accession to the Schengen area was an internal affair related to the elections. So. Before that, it's difficult to anticipate any change in the positions. But I will, can assure you that our ex actions in the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Affair, External Affairs continue to support this idea. Thank you.